all right guys i'm gonna go over the patch 4.11 i know it's a little late on it but i didn't really want to do the patch rundown until i really had a chance to get a feel for the new jungle items and like how the game is in general um because I, I don't really think I had like a full understanding of the patch notes, so I'm just going to give you a little bit more in-depth one. Because I know a lot of people did patch uh, rundowns and reviews and stuff like that already when the patch came out on patch day. But I've had a chance to play a lot of tank jungles and a lot of the new champions that can benefit from the item. And uh, I'm going to give a couple of my thoughts on that as well. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, let's start with uh, the bounty rewards have been changed on uh, First Bloods and also uh, the way that kill streaks scale up. One nice thing about this is, like, I've gotten a lot of early kills on junglers, uh, and what happens is you get first blood, and before you'd be like, wow, I can buy, like, a ward, or I can buy a uh, reju bead. But now, uh, you can actually buy boots with that money, or you can buy, uh, you can sell one of your pots and buy a longsword. You can do a lot of things with it. Uh, but I think boots are probably the most beneficial thing. Uh, boots are maybe getting pink wards and things like that uh, would be really good. So I like this change, because... It actually means that first blood is meaningful. It actually does something. Uh, you have like instant effect on your on your champion and your laning and how you're gonna do things. Uh, turrets turrets now ramp up faster, so uh, they pick targets faster and they also like hit you harder uh, faster when they're ramping up. Because everybody knows that as you get hit by a turret more and more, it, it does more damage to you. Um, so now it just does that even faster. You, you the damage ramps up even faster. So. Uh, the big thing I notice about this is like not just the damage ramping up, but the fact that turrets select targets slightly faster. This is really big for junglers because I'll do a lot of ganks where before I would maybe take like one turret shot and I'm like, all right, nice, like we got the gank off, like because usually people will flash in a turret or they'll or they'll you know they'll be hanging around the turret and you got to do like some pretty hypey dive situations. Um, instead, you'll take two turret shots now in, instead of one. Uh, so. You just have to like account for that when you're doing your ganks. Uh, I think it's pretty big. Uh, lane minions now grant experience at a 1400 range. To be honest, the only real change I noticed with this is... Well, no, there's two changes. When you're playing support and you're kind of hanging back, uh, like you're Thresh and you're like, oh, we know the junglers in the area. Like, I'm just going to sit back here and have a lantern for you. And I can pull you back into, you know, you'll be safe. <clears throat> you'll be in experience range when you do that now. And on top of that, the other change I, uh, I noticed uh, is that when you're doing raves, you can... You steal the mid laner's experience if the if the creep wave is starting to hit the turret. Uh, so buffs to junglers. Screw you, mid laners. That's my XP. All right, uh, Brom. They did a little bit of uh, nerfing to his early game. Uh, his passive does 20 less damage uh, in early ranks, and then of course it'll scale up into late game, and uh, just it'll do pretty much the, around the same damage once you're level 18. But the early game will be a little bit weaker. And then the debuff time to proc stun is now 4 seconds instead of 5. Uh, I thought it was really dumb. Like, once you had that, that debuff on you, you, it's so long where they can hit the, the stun combo on you. So I, I like that change where they just toned it down a little bit by 1 second. Because still, like, if you're in an all-in situation, you're going to be able to proc it. But if you're chasing, you can have a little bit less time to do it. Um, <clears throat> my face in the enemy, but would then smack his butt into the wall and not actually jump over to the safety. Well, that's just like a bug fix to his W to make sure he can jump over walls properly. Uh... Heimerdinger, just like, this is like the whole little clarity thing, like that, uh, that's all meaningless. This is a big change. Jax uh, had his base health, his health per level, and his armor per level all toned down. This is really good because uh, early game Jax, he can actually bully a lot of matchups, and he didn't really have that many bad matchups. Even against Renekton, it wasn't that bad. Um, but now Jax has a lot worse matchups in the early game because he just has a little bit less strength. And then on top of that, his late game also got hurt. So I think... Jax having 98 health per level was like way too much. So I think 85 health per level is more in line with a lot of the other, um, I don't want to say bruisers, but a lot of the other uh, high damage threat champions like Jax. So Jax can like two shot you late game. There's no reason for him to have one of the highest health per levels in the game. And also on top of that, his base health was really high too. So his late game got hit a little bit with this, and his early game got hit a little bit with this. Will he still be viable? Uh, probably. People will probably still play him. But uh, he's going to need a little bit more help from the jungler, and he has a lot worse matchups now. <clears throat> Alright, Karthus, Expo Requiem, Team Ult. Dude, this, is a bit, this bug has been in the game since the game existed. You're like, yo, Karthus, why didn't you ulti him? You know, it, it, the green dot, it, it showed you had your ultimate. It was like, no, I already used it. Like, it's down. Like, the, the bug, this bug has been in, in the game forever. It's such a stupid bug. These are really big nerfs to Kale. Attack speed per level got reduced uh, by 0.3, which may not sound like much, but it actually is quite a bit. 
Uh, Righteous Fury got the AP ratio cut in half from 0.4 to 0.2. And then Intervention has 20 second longer cooldown at all ranks. Um, I felt like Kale was already starting to get like bullied a little bit because people were starting to figure out counter picks to her. Um, she was still a really strong champion on 4.10, but now she's like... I think this makes her a lot more reasonable. Like, she's going to be a way situational pick. Because, uh, like, a lot of the mid lane picks that are being played right now are really pokey and can chunk Kale out and bully her. Uh, and then on top of that, a lot of the top lane picks, like Gragas, like Gragas is becoming really popular, and that's like a pretty good counter to Kale as well. Uh, so I think this will hurt Kale's ability to lane a little bit. Uh, it's going to be more of a counter pick rather than just picking into anything like it was before. Uh, there's just like a Lucian joke. All right, here's big changes. Maokai. So Maokai was one of my most played champions in season two and three. Um, I have like hundreds of games on him. Uh, he's one of my favorite champions. So I was kind of looking forward to the Maokai changes. Uh, but after playing him, it he pretty much feels like the same champion. He doesn't really feel that different. Uh, he's still, yeah, he still feels about. He's not like stronger or weaker. I feel like he's not like above and beyond anything else. He's a situational pick. I feel like. So let's look at the changes. Uh, the slow duration has been changed from two seconds to one point five. Big whoop, who cares about that? But they lowered the mana cost uh, to 45 mana, which is, thank God, because this is one of his primary abilities uh, for clearing the jungle. Because a lot of people max Q on Maokai. Um, I know some people don't, but I think definitely the way to play him is to max Q. <clears throat> and then this is the biggest change, I think, for Maokai. His W, uh, they changed it from having a flat damage to uh, having an a or a percent health with a, a pretty good AP ratio on it. So... Um, now it does, uh, you know, nine nine percent of their maximum health at level one if you w into them, and then it does fifteen percent at max rank. Uh, a lot of Maokai's actually go uh, zero twenty one nine, um, and I feel like you should go nine twenty one zero on Maokai specifically because of this ability. If you get the uh, the AP masteries in the offense tree, uh, you will actually ha add another one percent onto his W damage. So I think that's pretty good, and on top of that, you get the four percent CDR, which is, or I mean, five percent CDR, which is like amazing for Maokai. CDR is god on Maokai. And then they also lowered the mana cost on this to seventy-five at all ranks, which is whatever because I I maxed E second on Maokai before, anyways. Uh, I know not a lot of people did that, but I, that's what I was doing. I think now I will probably max W second though, just because they nerfed E all around. And then the cooldown has been reduced to nine seconds on this. Uh, which means that if you have max CDR, you can be rooting somebody every five and a half seconds or so. Uh, which is really dumb since this ability like roots you for two seconds. So you can lock people down really hard with this ability. And then, of course, just to deal with that, they lowered the range on it by... Uh, they went from 650 to 525, which is definitely a noticeable change. It is kind of annoying sometimes when I'm trying to get on somebody, but it's not that big a deal. If I want to W somebody, I usually get on them anyways. Oh, and this is actually a big thing. I just realized this last game. Maokai no longer has to wind up for advancing to enemy travel time. Uh, I mean, the enemy travel time remains the same. The reason they did this change was so that you could use W while clearing the jungle and not reset the jungle minions. Because before, the W would make you slightly untargetable, and then the minions would go, and then they just reset. And they would end up having more health than before you did your W. So now you can actually use your W, w to clear the jungle out, which is pretty good. Um, because Maokai always had problems dealing with big minions, and now you do a percentage of their maximum health. Uh, <clears throat> Sapling Toss. Movement speed now scales with Maokai's bonus movement speed, so thank god it'll actually catch people now. And the Sapling Explosions. Enemies damaged by Sapling Explosion are now slowed by 50% for one second. That's a pretty nice slow, uh, but it's not really used for catching. I think it's used for peeling more. At least that's my opinion. Uh... Yeah, it's just it's a catching or it's it's like yeah it's a good peeling ability like 50% slow when somebody's on your on your carry you W Q and then like E them on top of that they're just gonna be chain slowed forever and then you'll just W again right after that. Um, sapling base movement speed has been reduced so that's just to deal with like sapling movement speed scaling that's obvious and then the the damage has been lowered um, at all ranks so. That, that's kind of weird. That's the main reason I don't max E second now is because they lower the damage on it. But you can still max E second if your team needs a lot of wave clear, and you can use it to, uh, you can use it to, you know, just to wave clear with it or whatever. But I don't think you should max it second since you don't need it as much for wave or for clearing the jungle anymore because, uh, they, of course, they added the new jungle item. This is a really nice change. Vengeful Mouse are now self cast and circles Maokai instead of sitting on the target. I love this because you basically you ult yourself. 
And then you just follow your carries around while they're chasing people around and, or running or doing whatever they need to do. And you can just kite with them, and then it permanently gives your carries the 20% damage reduction. Uh, Maokai is an amazing peeler. Uh, as long as you sit near your carries and then just W whoever goes on them and then Q them, and just your whole job and mission in life is to protect your carries uh, while you're sitting there with your Vengeful Maelstrom, you can do so much work in a team fight. Uh, but of course they lower the radius because of this, which is not really that big a deal. If you're sitting on top of your carries anyways, that shouldn't matter. And then of course they lower the initial mana cost, uh, which is, thank god, because Maokai had huge mana problems. So, across the whole board they lowered his mana cost, which are really good. Um, I feel like Maokai is a tier 2 jungler, he's still behind the core 3, but he definitely has situational picks. A really fun combo is to pair him with Yasuo, since you're gonna get all the blue buffs. Uh, and then you can Q people. Uh, when you W into them with Maokai, and it will knock them up, and you can Yasuo ult ultimate off of it. So I really like that pairing together. Um, Nautilus, like these are like irrelevant changes on him, just the fact that the staggering and all that. I still feel like Nautilus is like... <sighs> I don't know. He just doesn't do any damage, and he can't scrap at all. Like if you if the core 3 junglers are picked into Nautilus, he will get bullied hard. At least Maokai when you pick him into the core 3 junglers, which I wouldn't do anyways. Uh, Microphone sound muted. Muted. sorry, I would, uh, I would, he can like throw his saplings and like play like a bitch and play really passive and safe. Nautilus doesn't have that option, he doesn't have a poking and scouting ability. Instead he has to like head on fight that Lee Sin that's in his jungle. Um, and then he's gonna get shit on really hard. So that's why I don't care for Nautilus that much. Uh, Nidalee, they basically, yeah, they raised her base health, they raised her base armor, they tweaked her passive prowl. The Javelin Toss is a little bit easier to hit, and then Bushwhack also has a lower cooldown now, um, and does slightly less damage. I still feel like Nidalee's a terrible champion, but that's just my opinion. Uh, she has really low win rates. Just even like looking at all her abilities, like whoop de doo da like none of these are like really huge defining changes to Nidalee. I still feel like she'll have a sub 50% win rate uh, until people really learn how to play with her, because how I view Nidalee is she's a lane bully, you have to snowball with her. So when I'm a jungler and I see Nidalee in the game, I will literally just sit in her lane for like the first five minutes of the game. And if she ever goes aggro, I will go on her so fast and kill her. And then guess what? Nidalee does not scale well in the late game. She didn't get snowballed and she's just going to be a useless champion. <coughs> so still don't like Nidalee. Um, so Skarner, when we made changes to Skarner back in 410, we had to tune. These are just like damage uh, changes to go down. Like, I, just, I think Skarner is probably a tier 2 champion. He still has good pick potential. He still has decent scrapping potential. Um, even though they did lower his damage uh, around. But it's like... It's whatever. He's still like a tier 2 champion. Uh, you can now do... You can cast summoner spells and use items while you're in Vladimir's W. This will just like allow him to make hyper plays. Like better initiates and better escapes. Like Because you can, you can flash W. Or you can W flash on people. Or you can W flash away. Things like that. Or W ghost. Uh... And of course, you can hourglass straight out of pool now, so it's pretty good. Uh, Yasuo, yeah, so, but bonus damage cap, they lowered it from 100% to 50% at 2 stacks. So this is just to make sure that Yasuo yeah, can't lane bully in like the first couple of levels by stacking his E and then just Eing into you for like a billion damage. So he's going to be slightly less of a lane bully, but he's still going to be a really strong pick. Uh, these Zach changes where you can pick up your Bloblet and like lower the cooldown on Unstable Matter by 1, and then also pass through jungle minions. This makes it Zach a really fast jungler, and he can clear the jungle very effectively, and he can do Dragon and Baron very effectively. However, Zach still has this problem where they nerfed his base damages so much and his scaling ability that I feel like Zach is he's just a CC bot. He doesn't do enough damage to be relevant. Uh, in order for Zach to come back, I think that they have to buff his damage. Um, that or you have to have like really synced up team comps that initiates, which is just not the case in solo queue. So still feel like Zach is like subpar champion. <clears throat> Ziggs, they lowered his base movement speed and the explosion trigger detection radius by 30 on Bouncing Bomb. Um, good, like Ziggs is annoying as shit, but he's still going to be like a really good champion. Uh, they made Shivana, Thresh, and Vi's hitboxes bigger. whoop de doo da that just means they're easier to hit with skill shots, updated splash arts, items. So these are the big changes. The jungle item, the hunter's machete. So now you have one less potion uh, when clearing because hunter's machete costs 325 gold. People can argue, hey look, 5 damage reduction versus monsters and plus 10 damage versus monsters. Um, I don't know. Like the real, the real thing I see about, like you can still clear the jungle just fine with the 
with one less potion. But I don't like that you don't have that you have one less potion on champions like Lee Sin, uh, because Lee Sin doesn't really jungle that much, and I'm using that extra potion to sustain myself in between ganks. So I think it's a nerf to champions like that. <clears throat> Alright, so Quill Code. This is the big tank changer. I think it's a really good item. You clear the jungle fast, and I like the fact that you have a ward with it, and it opens up a lot of opportunities for champions. Uh, and of course, this item builds into Spirit of the Ancient Golem, which uh, got really changed. It has less base health, but it has better scaling health because of the 25% bonus health increase. And they added 20 armor. Uh, and they also, of course, put the Quill Coat passive on Spirit of the Ancient Golem, and they made it to where Ancient Golem can ward. Uh, this is really good for tank junglers. However, champions like Elise, I've noticed, you can't solo Baron or Dragon as easily because you don't uh, get percentage health back when you're using your abilities. And of course, Elise doesn't really tank stuff. You use your Spiderlings to tank it, so you're not going to be proccing the passive as effectively to re regenerate health and mana. Um, and on top of that, they took away the tenacity, so champions like Elise have to build Merc Treads against heavy CC teams, whereas before, you wouldn't have to do that. Um, kind of annoying that, that that's the case, but I still think... Ancient Golem is a very good item, and situationally it's very good on a lot of champions too, especially tank jungles. Uh, so far I've played a lot of the different tank champions. The only ones I feel are like really viable, like Nunu feels incredibly strong with the new Ancient Golem because it allows him, it gives him a, an extra ward so you don't have to go uh, the Sight Stone, and it also gives him a way of clearing the jungle very fast, uh, whereas Nunu had kind of like mana problems before with clearing the jungle. So this is going to help him maintain his mana pretty good, and uh, also just give him a ward. So all good stuff. <clears throat> Alright, so then Spirit Stone, you know, they just basically change the cost on all these items to go online with the machete. Essent Reaver got buffed to 60 damage instead of 50. It's still, like, such a weird situational item. I don't know. I don't think I would ever get over IE or anything like that. Like, you're losing 20 AD plus all the other effective damage stats. So maybe Ezreal. I don't know. Still not sold on Essence Reaver. Uh, and then these are all just bug fixes, so, yep. How I feel, basically, the cat summarizes this up, the core three junglers are still god, like, Elise, Lisa, and Eve will, if you play against, if you try to pick a tank jungler into one of those champions, and they actually understand those champions, because, like, I know a lot of people in lower brackets, they don't really understand how dumb Elise, Eve, and Lisa are, it, because they've never played against a good Elise, Lee, or Elise, or that. Well, I'm just going to say the core they never played against a good one of those people. If you're playing against a good Elise or Lee, they will have killed your lanes three times, or whatever, four times, before you ever get a chance to, to pull off a gank uh, with a tank jungler. And if they're there to counter gank you, or to 2v2, or to scrap you, or force an objective, um, like a blue buff, and you try to contest it, you will get shit on. A Maokai will never beat uh, a Lee Sin. It will just not happen. So you're going to have to forfeit your buffs if they play it properly, and you also have to forfeit all early game pressure. That doesn't mean that these champions are unplayable, but people have to understand and learn how to play around them. Um, until they nerf Lee Sin, Elise, and Eve, I think that's still all you're going to see, and that's going to be the go-to picks. Uh, but yep, that's my thoughts. Uh, sorry that the patch rundown was a little bit late. Um, try to do the next one on time more. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.